Section 6.2, Slopes of Parallel and Perpendicular Lines. We can look at two lines and tell whether they are parallel or perpendicular just by knowing their slopes. Let me show you what I mean. So here I have two parallel lines. If I were to calculate their slope, I would pick two points, I'd find the rise, and then I'd find the run. And that would give me my slope of line one. If I do the same thing on the other line, slope of line two, I should have the same rise and the same run on both parts. What that means is for parallel lines, the slope of line one needs to be exactly the same as slope of line two. Now, in math, we get a little lazy. Sometimes we'll write parallel as two lines like that. That's short form for parallel. When I look at perpendicular lines, there's a pattern there as well. Now, just remember, perpendicular lines are two lines that cross at 90 degree angles. Now, I'm looking at these two lines, and what I see is one line is going to have a positive slope, and one line is going to have a negative slope. That's the first piece that's important. One's positive, one is negative. Now to write it in math speak, the slope of line one is the negative reciprocal of the slope of the other line. Okay, right, now let's move away from the math speak. What does that mean when we're looking at numbers? If I'm given the slope of the first line, if it happens to be 3 fifths, rise of 3, run of 4. That must mean the slope of the second line, let's do a reciprocal first, it means the top becomes the bottom, bottom becomes the top, it's 5 over 3, and it's the opposite sign. M1 was positive, so M2 has to be negative. If I do another example, let's say m1 equals negative 4. What does m2 equal? The slope of the second line? Well, m1 isn't written as a fraction. Remember, anytime we've got a whole number, we can treat it as a number over 1. So I'm going to flip it. I'm going to make it become 1 over 4. And it has to be the opposite sign. m1 was negative, so m2 is positive. The slope of the perpendicular line is positive 1 over 4. I suppose I should also put in the, uh, the lazy way of writing perpendicular. It's that symbol right there. Let's look at two lines, and we're going to use those slopes to try to decide, are these lines parallel or perpendicular? So we've got two of them. We've got PQ and we've got RS. I'm not going to call them by their numbers or by their letters. I'm going to call this one line one, and this one is going to be line two. Now, in order to find those slopes, we've got two points. Last section, we went through how to calculate slope based on two points. We used the formula slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's label those points. P is going to be my first point. That's x1 and y1. Q is going to be my second point. That's x2 and y2. So if I want to find the slope of line 1, that's why I'm saying M1, I want my Y2, which is 10. My formula has a negative in it. Then I want my Y1, which is 2. So I go with 10 minus from the formula, and 2. My X's, I want X2. That's going to be a minus 2. And I want X1. I've got a negative from the formula, and then my point also has a negative on it. Let's deal with that double negative, negative times a negative. M1 equals 10 minus 2, I haven't dealt with that piece yet, minus 2, and negative times a negative is a positive 7. Now let's finish this off. Slope of my first line is 10 minus 2 is 8. Minus 2 plus 7 gives me 5. Slope of my first line is 8 over 5. Let's do the same thing on my second line. R is going to be my first point, so that's x1 and y1. S is going to be my second point, so that's x2 and y2. Slope of my second line 
is y2. In this case, y2 happens to be 1. I'm going to go 1. My formula has a minus in it, so that has to stay there. And then I'm asked for y1, which happens to be minus 4. All right, I've got a negative minus 4. I've got that double sign again. And let's continue the uh, equation. Let's go on the bottom. Let's start with x2. That's a 5. My formula has a minus in it. And then I look at x1, which happens to be a minus 3. Yeah, let's get rid of those double signs. That 1 stays the same. Minus a minus 4. Minus times a minus gives me a positive 4. On the bottom, the 5 stays the same. Minus times a minus gives me plus 3. m2 equals 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. All right, now that I've got my two slopes, I'm going to use them to check if the lines are parallel or perpendicular. Let's start with parallel. If they are parallel, m1 is the same as m2. Well, 1 is 8 fifths, 1 is 5 eighths. That's not the same. m1 is not equal to m2, so they are not parallel. Okay, if they're not parallel, maybe they're perpendicular. Now remember, they have to be negative reciprocals of each other. m1 equals negative 1 over m2. That's the math way of writing that. When I look at my two uh, points, they are reciprocals, but they are not opposite signs. If they're, not, if they're not both reciprocals and opposite signs, they can't be perpendicular. So, not perpendicular. So in this case, these two points are neither parallel nor perpendicular. If you need to see it, it doesn't hurt to sketch it out so you can see directly whether they are parallel or perpendicular. Take a look down here. I've got that picture. I've got them sketched out already. This one is line one. That's line two. And they're clearly not parallel and they're not going to cross at right angles so they are not perpendicular. Let's go through one more example. I've got two lines here, line ST. Let's call that line one and line UV. Let's call that one line two. Find the slope of both lines. Once again, using slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's start with line one. This is x1 and y1. This is x2 and y2. y2 is negative 5. I've got a minus from my formula. And y1 is 7. So that's minus 5 minus 7. On the bottom, I've got x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is minus from the formula, and minus from the point. Let's get rid of the double negative. m equals minus 5 minus 7 over 2, and negative times a negative is plus 2. m1 minus 5 minus 7 gives me minus 12. 2 plus 2 is 4. Let's simplify that fraction to make a life a lot simpler. m1 equals minus 3 over 1. I could just write it as minus 3, but I'm going to hold on to that. I think it'll make more sense on the next one. Let's deal with line 2. This is my x1 and y1. This is my x2 and y2. m2 equals... So y2 on that one is 6. Got a minus from my formula. y1 is 3. So 6 minus 3. In the denominator, I've got x2, which is 7, minus from the formula. And x1 is minus 2. So I got a double negative. Let's deal with that double negative again. 6 minus 3. Minus times a minus is a positive. 7 plus 2. 
m2 is 6 minus 3 is 3 7 plus 2 is 9 simplify that fraction 3 divides into both of those that's 1 third now when I go look at these two slopes they tell me something they are reciprocals check they are opposite signs check if they were reciprocals and opposite signs these two lines must be perpendicular next question I've got a line passing through points E and F so 2 comma 3 and minus 4 minus 1 the question is asking me what is the slope of a line that is perpendicular to this line now in order to do that I have to know what the slope of this first line is. We'll call this line 1. So let's find that slope. That's x1, that's y1, that's x2, that's y2. We're going to use m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Put the numbers in, calculate the slope. m1 equals, so y2 is minus 1. Minus from the formula, and y1 is 3. x2 is minus 4. I've got a minus from the formula, and x1 is 2. No double signs. Minus 1 minus 3 gives me minus 4. Minus 4 and minus 2 gives me minus 6. Let's simplify that. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. That's good. I'm going to take both of these and divide by 2. So I'm left with m1 equals 2 over 3. Let's look at m2. In order for it to be perpendicular, it's going to need to be the negative reciprocal of m1. So the reciprocal is 3 over 2. Instead of 2 over 3, it's 3 over 2. And then it's going to be the opposite sign. m1 was positive, so m2 must be negative. There is the slope of the two perpendicular lines. Let's extend this question a little further. Let's say, what is the slope of a third line if it is parallel to M1? This one's quite a bit simpler. If two lines are parallel, their slopes are exactly the same. So M1 equals M3. In this case, M1 was two-thirds. So M3 should be exactly the same, two-thirds.